and welcome to Serpent Temple. I'm here with Matt Bacon. Hi. I know your name. You do know my I name. Know I'm name. very excited. It's wonderful to have you on. I've been a fan of yours for a while now, and you always have really interesting things to say. For people who don't know who you are, and I'm sure there's maybe one or two, could you... For the one or two of you. <laughs> only, only one or two. Anyone on Instagram knows who this guy is. Maybe. Um, hi. So, I'm Matt Bacon. I run a marketing company called Dropout Media. Uh, most people know me from my Instagram and TikTok, at uh, bacons.bits, where I do four videos of band advice every day. Uh, but on top of that, I do marketing for a whole bunch of people from like Cannibal Corpse and Killswitch Engage to a bunch of like big pop things, some of which I'm not allowed to talk about, but like Lucy Dacus and Dylan Francis, and I did like a Kurt Mile campaign. So kind of mostly in metal, but then sometimes pop things just kind of fall in my lap. Uh, really focused a lot on ads and email marketing, which are, especially in heavy metal, like dramatically, dramatically undervalued, uh, mostly because nobody wants to fuck with it because it's too much work. And it's not as sexy as like, I, I don't know what other people do. Like look, look cool. I don't know. I feel like you're secretly the reason that a lot of bands are as big as they are, in a way. You're like the, the godfather of, of for, success. For like a few things in like the American scene, that like for that I grew up with, but I feel like most of it is, I'm the reason some of those bands sell as much as they do. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of bands that I've talked to, and as someone in a band, a lot of people I've met don't understand the difference between PR and marketing. Yeah, I and would a agree lot with of that. the time where they think that they need to be successful, they're like, I have to pay a PR, I need to do PR, PR, PR. But yeah. really, PR is just a relationship between the band and the press sure. and not the band and the audience, which is like, I think where you come in. Yeah, and I think that it's interesting watching kind of the landscape change, right? Because I think at one point, the way most people found out about bands was really through the press right and now that's sort of a secondary thing it's like pr has kind of become like radio where it's like the first steps that actually matter are uh you know having a really good aesthetic having really good music i should have said that first now everyone's gonna roast me on the internet switch that around in the edit <laughs> <laughs> but you know but it's like it has to look pro it has to have really good hooks it has to i did it again <laughs> but you know what i mean like it ha like there's no point to having PR if your product looks shitty and it sounds shitty, right? And so many people fuck that up. The same way there's no point to having ads. Ads also are a secondary thing. You know, like everybody thinks, oh, I can just pay Matt a bunch of money and get some streams and blah, blah, blah. And like, yes, you can pay me a bunch of money and get some streams. Please do. But if you're not, if there's nothing to back it up, it doesn't matter. Right? And it's like, and it's the same with PR. It's the same with, and everyone hires these things. That's not true. A lot of people hire these things as shortcuts early on because they think they're going to kind of skip a step. But that's not really how it works because the product you're selling needs to be worth selling and needs to have like depth that people are going to connect to. Do you know what I mean? Because even if you get, and I, we've all seen it happen, you know, bands get a Rolling Stone feature, but the music sounds like shit and the Instagram looks like a bunch of like, sad middle-aged white guys with no compelling narrative <laughs> like <laughs> what what's the point y y you know what i mean <laughs> and oh you just dropped three thousand dollars on a pr campaign or three thousand dollars on ads for something that had no yeah substance there we I go i think Thank that you. you really touch on something that i'm very passionate about and with when it comes to like the the non-musical side of music, which is the story, the yeah. narrative. And I think a lot of people find it super difficult to find their story yeah. in a band, especially if it's like not already really apparent in what the music is or the sound. Yes. How do they do that? <laughs> um, do we have to pay you to get past the, that level? Like, no, I mean, well, it's tricky, right? Because you have to figure out but I think it's about figuring out like what is authentic to you and what you represent. You know what I mean? Because I think that like take a band like like Full of Hell, for example. Okay? Because I think everyone's like, oh well, if like obviously women or trans people have a leg up. And first of all, like, no, that's a really stupid take. Second, that's not how it works. Right? <laughs> because like everyone has some sort of story they can tell they just have to figure out how to compellingly tell it right so like full of hell is a really good example of like 
a bunch of like young white guys whose like whole narrative is essentially around being really fucking committed to DIY for a really long time so that the first time I saw them was in front of 30 people in a music school and I just saw them play here to like 10,000 people and like Dylan walked off and was like oh hey Matt like you know <laughs> like, we've been there the whole time together you know what I mean and but like that and like but that but like the way they show that and the way you know um Dylan kind of shows some of the artsiness behind Full of Hell and the, the way they document that authentically and they're not trying to be something else and they're never trying to go and be some super polished death metal band you know it's the gnarliest evilest fucking band who all the kids who I manage now really look up to you know what I mean and I think but what did they do they just were authentic to themselves and they were just authentic to like hey we're really into this thing you know we're really into uh what were we talking about today uh fuck dylan and i had a whole power violence conversation earlier today but like just talking about like the weird old school power violence they're into into all the weird art they're into and using that as a narrative for like oh if you're like a weird artsy person who likes death metal maybe this is something you're gonna latch on to and as like a weird artsy person who likes death metal that's been a big part of my life since i was like 16 you know uh does that make sense as how yeah. to construct that narrative? Uh, Full of Hell is such a good example. I saw him live at a Damnation Festival last year. There you go. And just the way Dylan does, you know, he'll switch and just leave and do a bit with, like, the, the electronic sampling and stuff. Yeah. And just, it's just so DIY. It just reminds me of bands like your Converges and your Pink yes, Destroyers. exactly. And just, Converge is another example of, like, the story isn't complicated. The story is just DIY. But, like, sharing that consistently so that people go, oh, wow, this is actually, like that motherfucker you know uh vicky Sarakis, i'm sure i mispronounced that from uh wasn't the agonist now has a band called six sense like she's a really good example of like just documenting like she's literally got her patreon and her twitch and that kind of like lets her be a metal singer and then documenting that whole diy process with the merch etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense as like an approach to getting people on board you know what i mean and it's just like you have to share that piece of the story and then people connect and even if your story is like ghost if you look at their instagram it's all just we play fucking arenas fuck you just that <laughs> to say nothing of like the wwe promo stuff they do yeah that's compelling you know uh sometimes it's just zombie wolves like what's that zombie wolf band is it wolf be great there's a zombie zombie wolf band a power wolf power wolf no. All the, everything is zombie wolves. All the album covers, oh, all the yeah. music. Yeah, I've never listened to them. Are they priests? Yeah, they're yeah, wolves that are also priests. Well, I think <laughs> only one is a priest. I think the others are like clergy, maybe. Oh, it's oh. like ghost for wolf zombies. I like that the keyboardist like doesn't have anything to do on half the songs and is also like a hype man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the flavor, flavor, Ten power wolf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's the best hype like, man. But I, yeah, I. <laughs> I think Power Wolf are better than I would care to let on. <laughs> <laughs> they, have, they got their story right. No, but yeah, but yeah. like that's another band where yeah. it's like middle-aged German guys who just like found a really interesting, slightly funny, but also like genuinely thoughtful and aesthetic way to present themselves and to kind of be like the more ghost than ghost yeah. is like how I describe them a lot of the time, yeah. you know? But again, like... They found that path that was like gets people to connect, and it's zombie wolf priests. What I found interesting about Ghosts was I felt like there was such a bait and switch with their imagery and their music. Yeah. I know a lot of people that when they first saw Ghosts and listened to them, it was such like so unexpected that that's really helped a lot of people's kind of like awareness of the band. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, and I think that's like you're starting to see this. I would argue it was kind of started by Escuela Grind who I manage this sort of like super like makeup and grindcore or twerking and grindcore which is like <laughs> I'm pretty sure Escuela invented that and now I see other bands with femme presenting singers twerking and I'm like <laughs> wow I used to okay like to at twerk. least we're at least we're impacting the kids <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> but like but Respect. like you see stuff like that right yeah. and it's like but it's the same thing as ghosts. It's like, oh, so like, they're gonna like 
be into makeup, but also grindcore. And Ghost is like into black metal, but also Blue Oyster Cult. Shout out Ghost for like a new wave of popularity on the greatest rock band. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think Agents of Fortune is like way up there. Some of the greatest. That is albums not the time. right best Blue Oyster Cult album. Oh, oh, which one? What would you say? Oh boy, <laughs> What's not the one? Agents I'm, of Fortune. I'm, pr- I'm proving my falseness here. What's the one with all the figures on the front? The one that has "Burning for You" on it. Can't remember. What's got... yeah, yes, yeah. it's the one that's got. It's, it's got the one that's got "Burning for You" on it. But that's also a great album. That is. Yeah. That is the best one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the name because I'm mad at you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anyone's names, it's including there albums. You go. I can't name free of anything. Neither That's... can I. I can name albums usually, but I can't name songs. It depends what it is. I can name but... you every song on August by Wishbone Ash. Yo, that record fucks. <laughs> Nobody sounds... else fucks with Wishbone Ash. That's the reason Ghost Sounds the way Ghost Sounds, because King King Will Come is exactly Ghost That's like, songs. Um, that song Warrior is just a Palbearer song. <laughs> it is? Oh yeah, like with like the multi-part harmonies and like the guitar line. That's but just it's like, so, that's it's just such a, an influential like, song. And then I went to Palbearer and I was like, you guys stole this, right? They're like, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love when you talk to a band, they're like, yeah, I stole this riff from like, you know, Wishbone Ash or Cream or like, uh, there's just so many. This, but that August album, like that made Iron Maiden Iron Maiden. They, yeah. they did the twin lead guitars from that. Carcass did the twin lead guitars from that. Like, and that led to like half the bands at this festival. And like from yeah. that one album. 100%. Incredible. Yeah. Um, to circle back, we were, before we said Wishbone Ash and I got excited. Sorry. I don't <laughs> think anyone in America knows about them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I, mean, I guess they do sell some tickets, but I don't know. Like, I like... They're like a band I feel like when I go to the UK people are like down to talk about. Yes. And then like when I'm in America everyone's like, oh, like Matt, like we don't even know this Arthur Brown guy. Come on. Oh. Um oh. Yo, Arthur Brown, Royal Albert Hall, September 29th. See you there. Yeah. <laughs> That's good good segue, I like. That. I'm like flying out my mom for that shit. I'm so stoked. Oh mate, I, I would love to see Arthur Brown. Like we'll, co- we'll come out, we'll do it. Okay, why not? We'll see. Like, the Banji <laughs> side plays Royal Albert Hall, you gotta go. That's the rule. I think Abba Hall, best place. I saw Wadruna there like 10 years ago. No, not Abba Hall. That was fucking that's Festival Hall. That's the wrong it's festival another hall. hall. Yeah. See, names. Anyway. Name blindness. Um, You know what's bothering me, bothers me about name blindness? My girlfriend knows the names of everything. And she's always flexing on me. <laughs> she sounds really cool, but really scary. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just it's very like... Oh, you don't know? Well, she's Eastern European, so it's like, oh, you are not knowing this black metal song. And I'm like, well, I've heard it, and like, I put out that band's record, but I like, <laughs> come on. I have trouble learning lyrics that I wrote. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so it's it's. I actually need to go to like a learning school for memory, <laughs> a memory learning school. Please start that. I would sign up. Oh yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Anyway. Do you want to do some side cards real sure. quick? So we'll do, yeah. <laughs> this is what we normally do in interviews, but you're so interesting. I just oh needed to like actually talk to you okay. before we did this bit as well. Okay. Because I'm always burning with questions. Um, <laughs> fire. Anyway. So Fires of Unknown Origin is the album, by the way. Thank you. Incredible. Incredible. Anyway. We'll sorry. do free cards, past, present, future. Okay. Put free cards face down on the table, if you please. They'll be your cards. From the top? From the t- uh, Whatever you want. I Chaos put them, reigns. I put them face down. Face down. Okay. Yeah, we'll turn them over one by one. Okay. Oh, I love, I love a single split. I love that. Oh, yeah. Gambling, man. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I feel like if I did the top three, it would be really boring, and everybody would make fun of me, so... No. <laughs> no one makes fun of the way people take the cards out. We have very nice audience members. Um, all right, so we'll start with your past. Turn over the card. This I'll guy? read you a description. That guy right there. Okay. Buff. It's a really good past. That's a. Uh, it's, it's very literal. The beginning than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's extremely past. I'll read it for you, just in case you're not sure what it means. Um, I, that's a joke. I'm, I'm really sarcastic and British. I'm really worried I'm coming across as really rude. No, you're good. <laughs> just really dry. Uh, new life is seen springing forth from the womb. The plant making a new green shoot with droplets of fresh dew under a morning sky. The card stands with a natural coming to birth of new ideas, a new hope, a new person entering the closed world of your life. Is a card of spring and psychological growth, the promise of new beginnings. 
That is generally what birth is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, as someone, you kind of do a lot of stuff to do with beginnings and birth and growth. Like, you help bands grow, right? Yeah, and I think it's, it's like a weird one, you know, because I think that you're... The whole issue with growing a band, right, is like... In 99% of bands, everyone has different expectations that are leveraged in different ways, you know? And so, like, figuring out that group of people who can all do it is really the hardest part. Like, I, as a kid, I always used to be jealous of, like... I went to a really tiny high school. There was, like, 65 kids in my graduating class. But, like, I was always jealous of these people who, like, meet other, like, really motivated people, like, when they were 15 and then turn that into something. You know, but then... I don't know, sometimes that's how it goes. And I've definitely met people when I was 15 who are here right now who I still work with. Like my friend Mathieu David, who's kicking around, who like we used to book like hardcore shows together and now he writes at Rolling Stone. So I don't know. Birth is probably important. <laughs> so were you like a quiet kid or were you getting out there going to shows at like 15, like booking shows? I was going, I started going to DIY shows when I was 14, 15 and like started booking like shortly after that and like doing stuff. Like, I was always, like, really just, like, this is what I'm going to do. And by the time I was, like, ending high school, I wasn't really, like, it was just kind of out. Like, I was just, like, okay, like, I'm going to get grades, but, like, I'm going to just book shows and stuff instead. And then I was in university for, like, 20 minutes, and that was just, like, oh, I could sit in this class where I've read more books and speak more languages than everyone. Or... I could book a thrash metal show and 200 people will come out and some of them will be pretty girls. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I would choose. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, <laughs> was not a hard time and you know, That's really not a lot more successful than those fucks. <laughs> Got a lot of resentment. <laughs> was there a moment that made you, before the university, Sure. Like that made you realize you want to start booking shows and doing stuff like that? I mean, there was a few moments. I think... As a kid going to shows, once I realized like how relatively easy it was, and like just the friends I had, uh, like Metsu, who I need to hang out with later, like just realizing like, oh, we could just do this as like homies, you know. Uh, but there was a moment <coughs> here actually. Uh, there used to be sort of an industry party the night before Hellfest, and I went to that. I don't even know how I got invited, and. Oh, I know how I got invited. It was my friend Gunnar Saarman, who you probably know. He does PR for Prophecy. He used to do Season of Mist. And I've known him since I was, like, a kid. And he invited me to this party, and I, like, met a bunch of cats who I still work with. And I always joke about it as, like, the party that launched a thousand ships. And I think that, like, that here was, like, a very significant birth of my career. So I'll give you that. Oh, okay. That's good. I think Shem, what were you... Oh, Shem was trying to make me... I, I hold it... I move away from the microphone to breathe and also to let Floyd know that he can also speak into the microphone. Are you good? Do you need to be somewhere? No, I thought that was a girl I knew, but it's all good. Ah, okay. Fair enough. Yes. Do you Sorry. want to go to the Next present? Yes. It's all good. Union. Second time that card's come out today. All right. Oh, Lord. <laughs> From birth to union. Okay, let's see where this is going. So I'll read this one for you. Okay. A cup stands at the confluence of two streams. This card stands for a coming together, a wedding, or an alliance. The cup is a symbol of celebration and relationships. It is a strong card with a promise of joy and the prospect of great river deriving from the union. It can also stand for the merging of two up to now separate parts of the personality. That's cool. I mean, that's kind of interesting because I'm about to go spend like three months with my girlfriend because I sort of live back and forth across the Atlantic. So this will probably be like our longest hang. <laughs> So that's kind of a that's kind of an interesting one to draw there. Yeah. Um, Where is she based? Dresden. Dresden. It's real. Very different. Very different. Very like. It's interesting being in East Germany. I have a lot of experience in West Germany, but being in East Germany is sort of like. Oh, okay, but it's cool because. It's cool because fans do go there, and when they do go there, you have them the entire night. So like. 
I know that when Full of Hell and Primitive Man play there in a few weeks, like that's gonna be like the best hang I have with them for like a few years. Because it's gonna be the night that I'm their only friend there and we're all just gonna hang out and tell stories about times we almost got stabbed in VFW halls when we were 12. <laughs> and, you know, uh, and that's kind of what it is, right? Um, so yeah, Dresden is cool, but you know. There's a few other unions going on behind the scenes that uh, I've been working on for like 10, 11 months now that you'll see come out. One that actually started here last year. Uh, relationship was kind of birthed and wait until you see. I'm so fucking excited. I can't tell anyone about it. Just that I've been working on it for so long. And oh my God. I'm excited about that. That's pretty sick. It's pretty much all I'm allowed to say. Oh, when will we know? How long do you know? Soon. Soon, okay. Speaking of uh, unions, you mentioned uh, Killswitch being the band you worked with. When Howard guessed, uh, guessed on that song, The Signal Fire, was that like quite a good marketing opportunity to kind of say, hey, look, we've got a track of two of the singers in the same place? Because I remember growing up being a Killswitch fan, there was always such debate on which side of the coin yes. you would be. Which I feel like almost grew them more yeah. to be like, to like have that debate as like, I feel like if the band always has like a talking point, like Lordy, like nobody would talk about Lordy if they hadn't won Eurovision, it's, and then that becomes yeah. like something everyone can say about them. And if you can have like an interesting fact to say about a band yeah. that provokes a conversation, and I feel like Killswitch kind of took advantage of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that was a cool union. And then they did the tour where Howard came out and did a few nights with them, or did a few songs with them every night, which was really cool. Uh, I can tell you, as the guy who runs their TikTok, that that is probably the most clips from that are like the most consistently successful videos that we ever post which makes sense right because like everyone's happy yeah uh because otherwise we don't really post a lot of howard content which i think makes sense because yeah he's not in the band also you should listen to light the torch light the torch are really cool oh that's uh, how it's Howard's Howard's the band. new thing yeah. yeah yeah and that's like honestly like if you like that era of kill switch it's like the perfect it's not that but it's the perfect evolution on that where like it sounds really oh this is what that would sound like with five ten years of you know what i mean yeah see i actually really loved his previous project uh, blood has been shed oh yeah because that was like it was like meshuggah metalcore and it was just so yeah, cool. It was cool and because like, i remember when he was poached from kill switch initially and like, it was it was strange because i knew him as the blood has been shed front man so it was just cool to see how he fit in and was just able to really um I mean, his melodic vocals are so good. Like his cover of, um, yeah. oh, like, um, no, no, not the Holy Dive, but in the cover of the, um, uh, what was it, Simple Man. Oh, yeah. It was just yes, on YouTube. Did. So good. And he just has such good stage presence, too. Yeah. Like, he just has a way of, like, yeah, exactly. You did it. You did, you did, you did the Howard move. <laughs> like, just watching him on that tour, I was like, wow, like, you're, you're like a, fr yeah, you're a star, which is like, the other piece, just to circle back to like marketing bands that like nobody wants to admit, is like if you don't have star power, then you're kind of boned. And you can learn star power, but like someone like Jacoby Shaddix, like people don't like Papa Roach, but they watch Papa Roach because he's so compelling. Yeah. You know, obviously, like there's real, but, like I'm not like a Papa Roach fan, but I will watch them because he's just a compelling person to watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I say that as someone who like admires their achievement and who I told him earlier today, I steal a lot from your TikTok. Like, he's great, but like, it's not for me, but I can still watch it and be like, just enthralled with someone like that. And I think that that's a big reason why most bands don't succeed and why bands sometimes with less good songs do succeed is because like, some people you just have to fucking watch no matter what, you know? Uh, when you're working with a band and you're trying to give them feedback on stagecraft, for example, like that kind of thing of like, how do you frame that? How do you communicate with a band <laughs> ways to improve that? Uh, point at people directly and make a lot of eye contact. Like, I think that you have to remember that like you have to give out more energy than anyone in the crowd can be reasonably expected to give. And if you look at, like, KISS last night, that's what they did, right? Amazing like, vibe, yeah. Like, Paul Stanley, like, has, like, all these weird moves, and, like, Gene Simmons is aggressively creepy. But, like, <laughs> you know, but, like, 
those things come together and they're fun and like clearly some of it's rehearsed but like and like the way Gene Simmons like is very explicitly playing to the camera like you see him like side eyeing just to be like oh I gotta make sure I'm over here now <laughs> <laughs> but like it fucking works right and I think that's crucially crucially important to kind of taking it to that next level you know what I mean uh, totally um, yeah and just and you can learn that but you have to like watch your favorite front people and then steal from them you know like the way femme presenting front people are stealing Katarina's twerk which like apparently works that's cool you know um it's fucking sick or what Katarina told me that I thought was pretty compelling was they said uh I try to have a different theme for every tour so like this tour is the high kick tour this is the twerk tour this is like there's always <laughs> something to just but that's the idea you know you touched upon TikTok, and I always think it's amazing how Will Ramos has completely transformed Lorna Shaw's profile as a band, and I think, like, TikTok seems to have played a large part in that. Will and I had a really good conversation about that. Uh, as Lorna Shaw was popping off, but before he was really popping off on that world, we had a really good conversation. Uh, and he's been, and not to take credit for it, he's really good at it. But I remember talking about this, and he already had a lot of these ideas and just, like, understanding, and we had... The thing with Will, and this is a thing that always has really impressed me with him, is he's like one of those guys who's a rock star, right? Like he's really, really, really good at being a rock star. And that's what matters. You know what I mean? Is like, he has that charisma. He understands how to put himself out there. He's really fun. And like, he's a really good example of like, if you're trying to be a front person of like sort of a fun band, like who you can model yourself after and have it make sense, you know? and have it like fit and be cool. Uh, but obviously there's plenty of examples, and I just want to be clear, because people always will say like, oh, well, that band, like, they have jokes and stuff. I don't have a joke band, but like, <laughs> fucking Dylan from Full of Hell. That's a really good example of a guy who has like a serious Instagram who like, you know, gal, same thing. Like he fucking has the story there, you know, uh, a lot of the black metal guys, you know, where even like, you know, everyone wants to always make an excuse like, oh, well, Nurgle has politics. or It's like, no, well, like, find your own fucking way, dipshit. Like, just use these as examples and then, you know, aren't you supposed to be creative? <laughs> <laughs> good point. Very good point. Aren't you an artist? Do artist things. It makes sense. It's part of your art is presenting your art. You can't just do art on yourself. It's just masturbation when it's like that. You may as well just not release it if you're not thinking about how your audience is going to interact with it. Yeah, well, it's like Kafka, right? Like, he's, like, the closest example we have to, like, a mad genius who didn't want to publish his work, but who still, like, published it to, like, his friends. Like, but, like, you're probably not that brilliant, like, Kafka, that you'll just figure it out and then kill yourself. He killed himself, right? Kafka? I don't remember if he killed himself. Do you think he did? Okay, he yeah. He probably did, judging okay, by his stories. <laughs> <laughs> he, wrote, he wrote books like, I'm a useless piece of shit. Oh, I'm a bug. Yeah. Oh, but, God. like, use AI to, like, correct it if that was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do the whole interview with AI yeah, and exactly. sketch this one. Just, you know, make me look smart. <laughs> are we AI? Maybe we are right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but, like, I feel like that's, like, the only other option if you're not trying to, like, actively market yourself, right? And, like, which is fine, you know, it's fine to create art just for you, but you have to, like, acknowledge that that art is just for you. I feel like when people are like, we're not marketing it as well, that can in itself be a kind of art marketing. You know, the yeah. Miyazaki, his last film, they're doing no trailer, no marketing, nothing, but they've announced that they're doing that at the same time. Yeah, and that's the thing, is like, and again, like, at that level... God damn it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Redo the whole interview. Shit. Start from the beginning. <laughs> he deliberately caught it from his friend. <laughs> Self-inflicted tuberculosis. Uh, now, now I'm going to look like such an idiot. <laughs> All the commenters are going to make fun of me. Oh. Oh. Why did I ever agree to do this? God damn it. <laughs> I bet the future card's going to be death. Watch. <laughs> Can we do this? Cancellation. Yeah, cancellation. Here we go. The scales. The scales of judgment because That's I was kind of, wrong about Casca. The scales of cancellation. I could read it for you. If you're like, it's going to be the word cancelled over and over and over again. Cancelled, 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 cancelled. 
A pair of scales with fruits hanging from an ancient twisted fruit tree. The symbol stands for justice, moderation, prudence, and a sense of balance in our affairs. It represents common sense and a harmony with the world of nature. Harmony with what? The world of nature. I'm real bad at that. <laughs> really? But you're, you're, it's Canada like really natural with the trees and the mountains, but I guess you're in the city and you don't have that? Yeah, like yeah. I, I take like four to six plane flights a month. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not, not very nature -y. Not doing great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actively like, uh, my girlfriend's into nature and I'm always like, yeah, but you could do that or we could like hang out at home. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I you guess know. going to Germany though that's going to help you regain that union is going to help you get I that get, balance I right? get, my girlfriend's like one of the only people who makes me like go outside not to a, like a metal show or brunch because I am like the worst Brooklyn hipster <laughs> <laughs> brunch is legit For, yeah but it's like weird because like Germany doesn't have as much of a culture of it but like London does and we love useless meals in the UK 100%. We have like brunch, elevenses, tea, tea high good. tea, afternoon yeah. tea, <laughs> supper. Yeah. Um, but sorry, so balance. You know, I, I think that's something I've been trying to better understand in the last few months. I think, uh, I think there's, you know, I think going into any festival season in particular especially after I feel like when it's winter and you're home and you're like home whatever you know it's easy to kind of stay in line but I think once you start going out to festivals doing all these things it's really easy to be like I'm gonna drink a beer with 300 people today whatever bro and then 300 beers later you're like that was that was not ideal <laughs> and you have tuberculosis and you're a yeah, bug exactly yeah. and you're accusing other people of suicide when they just got sick and, uh. <laughs> oh, don't worry like 99% of facts of me and the inner state on this podcast are wrong this is the misinformation podcast of the metal scene <laughs> this is why like I try not to do quotes anymore because anytime I do a quote someone writes me about it uh, you know which is like you know um all that to say, finding that balance is really hard. That's something... There's been a lot of changes in my company in the last three months. Um, and evolving around that has been really tricky. It's all going to be okay, but it's definitely one of those, like, oh, now we have to go with this paradigm. And that's always an interesting thing to unfold, you know, especially when you're you know, running a company that's big. I have eight people who work for me. You know, like I'm finding that balance and making sure that everyone, you know, when you're running a small company, you have to make sure everyone feels secure, you know, and if you have variable income and whatever, like you have to make sure people feel safe. And I think when you have, you know, uh, an employer who, you know, makes, makes TikToks about, wanting to kill himself, then you really got to make sure they feel safe. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but then you find a way to do it. And I think that's like really crucial. Uh, you know, so there's definitely like paths there. And I think that's sort of been the balance I've been trying to understand is having a few weird left turns and realizing two lefts don't make a right, but three do. Nice. That's a beautiful way of describing finding balance through geometry and union and birth all those things come together in your life for your I, work i guess yeah i, I guess so I'm, I'm sorry about the kafka thing any descendants <laughs> <laughs> although did he have kids i don't think he had kids am i wrong about that I look highly... it up <laughs> bring that shit up pull it up, Jamie. Pull it up. <laughs> i'm presuming kafka didn't have kids but i realized none of my kafka facts are right anymore <laughs> so <laughs> i'm really just like Really, uh, if I could get this W to end it on, I'd be really happy. We need to give you a W for sure. Let's give this guy the win card. <laughs> I'm like not entirely sure when he was alive. <laughs> I definitely did read the bug book. I'm not going to claim I know the title because... <laughs> Maybe that's wrong too. Kafka never married. According to Broad... That's Kafka not the question. <laughs> Kafka was tortured by sexual desire. <laughs> but it don't say shit about kids. So we're going to assume Kafka had no descendants. 
But if you were like a descendant of like a niece or a nephew, I'm sorry. You know, whoever runs the estate, if you're watching this, we my apologize bad. formally to the Kafka estate. You know, I'll. Uh, <laughs> I liked your bow. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make it sincere, you know. Yeah, gotta gotta show people I care about the Kafka okay, estate. Wait, this, wait. Oh, he ha Franz Kafka had fathered an illegitimate son who died at the age of seven. <laughs> Did the son have children? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be seriously That's worried. Not out seven year olds. <laughs> <laughs> Can that be the pull quote? <laughs> Can that be the pull quote for that interview? That's a fertile seven year old. <laughs> Matt Bacon canceled. in conversation. <laughs> What's 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 cancellation? What's cancelable about that? I don't know. If a seven-year-old had a child, that's not that would be Someone a fertile seven-year-old. That's way. not that's not something you'd cancel. Well, there's a seven-year-old child. That's that's <laughs> that's completely not. That's like the five-year-old girl who got pregnant in like Brazil. Like, what? Oh, fucking horrible! You know about yeah. this? Yeah. yeah but that's but not like yeah. cancelable to talk. Like I feel bad for her. That's oh terrible. My God. Yeah. 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 Like that's fucked up. That's not something you can cancel someone over. That's nah, just that's a, a bad thing, thing that happens. Cancel. Inquisition haven't been fully cancelled. So. Yeah, they're still selling merch. <laughs> Oh God. What yeah, that's a fucking. That's a whole thing. Man, okay, you know. <laughs> it's part of that whole thing of like society's okay with you being a pedophile if you're good enough at music. Nobody wants to admit that, but it's true. What is up with that? Like, like Jimmy Page, Michael Jackson. Yeah. We're just like whatever. Jimmy like, Page. That's Jimmy fucked. Page not being canceled, and also like, there's so many layers to that one. Cause like, I feel like, like, like there's a difference between like being a pedophile, or, like being a pedophile who like does sex magic on teenage girls. Like, like like both are like really bad, but what is like? <laughs> that's another like, level. You know, that's like rededicating like a lot of time to it. on level access of a. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was a cancelable joke. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just, I was just calling Jimmy Page a bad person, and you know, but like. And it's like, it's wild to me, because like, like it, what's wild to me is that Michael Jackson has been like canceled and rehabbed on pedophilia like three, four times now. Jimmy Page has never been canceled. <laughs> like, there's never been like a, should we be listening to Led Zeppelin? Like, which like, maybe Led Zeppelin is just that much better than Michael Jackson. To be on it, oof. Like, oh, is that know. the metric? I don't know. I can't. They're or both seminal. the other really bad option is it's because Michael Jackson's black. Like, which I also th legit think is probably part of it. Because everything is terrible and we can't even cancel pedophiles right. This got so political. How is that political? I don't know. Anymore. I don't understand anything. I don't remember like, words I feel anymore. like that was a pretty... Jimmy Page is objectively a worse person than Michael Jackson is, ever was. He, uh, and we've ne no one's ever said shit. He, like, ab adopted a 14-year-old, No, right? that's the oh, other that's one. The that's, one. I think Steven Tyler did that. Okay, there's so yeah, many. Steven there's Tyler so many. many. And, like, his... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think she was, like, 16, you know. And then, like, Jerry Lee Lewis uh, had, a, like, a 13-year-old wife with the quote, she looks young, but she growed. Like, a lot of bad... But, you know, oh. we don't cancel these people. I but. thought the, the Pete Townsend then was, like, slid under the rug. Oh, yeah, he, like, yeah. he figured that one out. That was... Yeah. But... <laughs> Lord. Okay, we're, get, we're getting somewhere now. <laughs> Here we go. We're down the rabbit hole. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Pete Townsend one is weird. That's definitely worth a Google. A lot of layers there. Not one I can comment on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'll now find us probably murdered in like. Anyway, all time. this to say, great ways to promote. If you want great ways to promote your band, at Bacon Stop Bits, uh, maybe have some thoughts about Jimmy Page and. Don't do what he did. His badness. I mean, do some of what he did. Some of it, but you not know. that bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. To quote House of the Rising Sun. Sure. I don't even have to say the quote, but you, you um, heard it in your head. Anyway. Thank you so much for having me. Mate, it's been a pleasure. I love talking to you every time. I love talking to you. I love yeah. I love our DMs. I love talking about yes. uh, sweaters, you know? Very important. The sweater Nina this man is like had my number year. one sweater homie. We uh, like good weaves. Good yeah, fabric. I think that was how we became friends, actually, was you were like, I fuck with your sweater. 
and I was like, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> and then we watched Carcass. And it was then we watched great. Carcass in front of like 500 people because some boring band was playing more people cared about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the galaxy brain uh, taste people were at Carcass. We had the strong jawlines of the festival. Yeah. Is that? Do I have a strong jawline? Yeah. That's oh. sick. I always like super anxious that my face is too round. Honestly, same. But I think like it's one of those things. It just depends on the angle. Oh yeah. Oh my yeah. god. I'll show you my driver's license picture after we get off this. It was like <laughs> humiliating. Oh, like okay. I might go to the DMV for like three hours and waste a day so I can get a better picture. <laughs> like I'm. <sighs> yeah. The, ne the lighting's always really bad. Like fuck those booths. They oh, need, like wow. they need one with like really nice like mood lighting, what makes you like cheekbones. I know. Pop. I just yeah. I want to like I want to have like a makeup artist in there and like. Yeah. Why not? Fuck it. You know. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for coming thank you. on. D follow for more. DM for private consultation. Yes. <laughs> yes. We need cigar as well. <laughs> I almost brought one today.